very good morning it's penuel the black pen uh i'd like to start off by thanking my good friend uh, rob hersoff who invited me the, to the biz news conference which is the sixth biz news conference which is being held in the beautiful town the clan torpi van hermanus uh hermanus in the beautiful western cape uh, the whale coast um he's been inviting me for a couple of years i think it may be the first year that they are hosting it in hermanus uh, in the western cape and previously they'd been hosting it in the drakensberg uh, very very beautiful <laughs> Drakensberg Mountains in Wazulu Natal where I come from so to Rob Hersoff thank you so much for the invite I appreciate it very much and I'm actually honored to be here along with so many other people that are here um, as well I'm going to read to you guys the importance of this conference that I'm at so the business conference which is BNC number six is held in Armanus this year from the March from March 12 to March 14 2024 um, the event has been moved from the Drakensberg to the municipal precinct of the magnificent Western Cape Resort of Hermanus. Um, plenary sessions for about 350 delegates. So there's about 350, probably 400 people. There's actually quite a lot of people here. Um, the opportunity is for members of the business community to interact directly with some of the keynote speakers, of which some of them are political leaders, some of them are business leaders, uh, some of them are various leaders within society. And this creates a platform for maybe you'd call it ordinary folk to be able to engage with people that they wouldn't otherwise have access to i did make a video yesterday i posted it on tiktok facebook instagram linkedin where i was saying it would be so great if black colored and indian people were to host similar similar gatherings i think the ticket for this three day three four day event uh, is about five thousand six hundred it's quite a lot of money it's quite a lot of money for the average south african you obviously divide it by three days, you know, to make it, you know, 1,000 something. Um, but the opportunity to sit with so many political leaders, the opportunity to sit with so many business leaders, the opportunity to be able to network with certain people is something that I think is really, really worth the amount. I mean, if you're a business person, this 5,600, you'll probably get very quickly back just from networking from some of the people there. If you're looking to boost your career, maybe get a promotion, maybe move to another company, this is a great opportunity to do that and you'll get that money back. You find normally with the masses of black people that the only time they get to see politicians is when they are campaigning and holding rallies at stadiums. And even then, it's not an interactive session. It is a huge crowd, tens of thousands of people, and the focus there is to get people dancing, singing, chanting, getting all hyped, and then being fed a lot of promises. We need some of these smaller spaces where people can actually engage with politicians, especially because a lot of them claim to represent the majority of the people. So I think for me, it's important to look into creating platforms like this. Not to say that the business conference is for white people, but it's very, very much um, out of the 400, 350, 400 delegates uh, having been there yesterday. There's a chance that maybe there were like 10 black people that were there. And that is not... Uh, what am I trying to say? That is not to say that it was a white space. It is to say that the black people that were there were intentional about being in that space. And we need to create spaces like this for black, colored, and Indian people in South Africa to be able to engage politicians, business leaders, etc., etc. I know sometimes the ANC, the EFF, they host these dinners for fundraising, but those can be 30,000 rand. It's a lot of money, and I don't know if it's worth it. Um, I think it would be great to create platforms like this 300, 500 delegates, Indian, colored, black, that sit in rooms and get to engage with some of the political leaders of the country. But again, shout out to Biz News. Shout out to Alec Hogg, the founder of Biz News, who was also the founder of Money Web before it listed. Um, Newcastle High School, old boy. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very honored to be here again for that. Some of the guests that I saw, no, let me start with this. The guests that I'm going to be seeing today because I'm going to be heading out there. Uh, Wednesday the 13th of March, half past eight, Rob Hersoff, my boy, is going to be speaking there. Always, always controversial. I don't know if uh, this time it will be different. Many people did not know of Rob Hersoff until about two, three years ago at the business conference where he was calling out the ANC. And from there, it went viral. And since then, he's become like a pop activist that's really trying to hold government to account, while at the same time being polarizing for so many people because he is part of a third generation family. That has made a lot of money in South Africa, having built mines, industry, etc., etc. Rob Hersoff is, is in the morning, followed by Gates and McKenzie, the leader of the Patriotic Alliance. 
I've said openly that I will be voting for Gaijin McKenzie. I've said openly that I'm not necessarily supporting the Patriotic Alliance, but I would like for Gaijin McKenzie to sit in Parliament and challenge some of the policies that are there. Um, R.W. Johnson is going to be there speaking about the secularization of South African politics. Franz Cronier, who was with the International um, Relations, the IRR, International, what is it? Some race relations, the inter institution for race relations, sorry, the Institute for Race Relations, the IRR. Franz Cronier is going to be speaking after that. Um, and then we've got Phil Craig, who's going to be speaking about Cape Independence, a very, very polarizing topic that many South Africans don't support. And many people in the Western Cape don't support either. And especially now with Cape Independence trying to secure uh, signatures, which they fail to do, to actually hear from Phil Craig if this thing is actually worth fighting for or if it's just nonsense. Corne Mulder, one of the leaders of the Freedom Front Plus, is going to be speaking as well. Um, David Ansara, that I had on the panel show, who is the CEO of the Free Market Foundation, he is going to be speaking about proof, uh, proofing yourself against the state, how to make sure that the government is not really destroying your life to protect yourself from, a gov from this government. That's going to be for today. For tomorrow in the morning, my favorite entrepreneur, Christo Visa, uh, the founder of ShopRite, um, one of the leaders and who has grown Pepco um, and man, many other investments. Uh, he's going to be speaking in the morning. Um, Ex-ANC member and leader Mavu Somsimang is going to be speaking tomorrow as well. Kharifuri, the CEO of Capitech, is going to be speaking tomorrow. Ian Cameron, the leader of Action Society, which does a lot of policing, uh, crime, safety, uh, patrolling work in, in some of the townships in the Western Cape. Wayne Divanacher, the CEO of Outer is the organization undoing tax abuse they they are a non-profit organization which holds government accountable and says but we're paying our tax what are you guys doing with it Gigi Alcock uh, the white Zulu boy he grew up him seeing I believe his mom is still living him seeing uh, he's become a, a big voice for the township township entrepreneurship how the township can be unlocked so that uh, black people in, in particular get access to funding market and get assistance in that and then later on, it's going to be closed by Clem Santa, one of the visionary strategists in South Africa. He was the guy that did um, a post-apartheid strategy for South Africa, having spoken to Uta Nelson Mandela, the National Party, with F.W. de Klerk, and some of his visions for South Africa moving forward. Yesterday, when we opened, we uh, started off with the treat. Uh, the opening was with Alec Hogg, uh, who's the current program director, and he gets to interview some of these guys before they open it up to the floor. Uh, after Alec Hogg, we had Anneli Rabi, who is the mayor of uh, Hermanus and the Overstrand, uh, coming to welcome us into the beautiful town and to make sure that we're comfortable and we're happy and telling us some of the work that they've been doing. Uh, we had John Stianazen open up yesterday, the leader of the Democratic Alliance. We had uh, Ubabu Velenko Sin Shabisa, who is the current leader of Inkata Freedom Party, the IFP, speaking to us thereafter. And then we had Herman Mashaba, the leader of Action SA, address us. I've sat with him um, on the panel show as well. There's an episode that came out actually recently. And then we had Musi Maimani, an amazing orator who spoke uh, to close off the day yesterday. Had an amazing dinner uh, last night, hosted by Howard Saxton, uh, amazing human being. Uh, I believe he runs one of the biggest streaming platforms online for the Jewish community. Um, I met him when I was visiting Gareth Cliff at Cliff Central. Um, meeting Gareth Cliff, um, speaking to Rena Broomberg, who's doing amazing work with the podcast party. You can go and check it out on YouTube, the podcast party. I met Howard Saxton there, and one of the things he said to me is, a lot of my friends don't really understand you, and they say you're a controversial figure, they say you're anti-Semitic, and I'm like, I don't think Penn is like that, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not really like that. Uh, with that being said, I'm happy to challenge any, any community out there. It could be Afrikaans, Jewish, Muslim, Zulu, Black, uh, foreign etc to just try and look for good people and try and make sure that good people are rising above and making sure that bad people are not tarnishing their their image i also had an amazing conversation yesterday during our refreshments break um speaking to a gentleman called simon middleton um we spoke about some of the conversations that we'd heard earlier um simon is actually passionate about a south africa that works he's passionate about upliftment and empowerment we happen to have a few mutual friends. As much as Simon is like an old topi, uh, he knows some of the guys that I went to varsity with. He's worked with some of them. He's coached with some of them. He's mentored some of them. Um, and he was saying that he'd really like to contribute to some of the work I'm doing because of my boldness, because I'm actually passionate about 
getting this country working, getting people educated, etc., etc. So to Simon Middleton, it was an honor yesterday um, chatting to you. Uh, Kate, uh, also, I met with Kate yesterday, a beautiful lady from Guazulu Natal. Uh, I've been chatting with her on and off on WhatsApp. Uh, she sends me a lot of links of certain things that I may have missed in terms of politically, um, in terms of business. She asks some of my opinions on things that are trending out there, etc., etc. Um, I met to Ayanda Ali, you know, who used to be um, one of the presenters on Morning Life. She's now gone into politics. She's under BASA, Build One South Africa with Musi Maimani. I uh, had a really, really great chat uh, with her. Looking forward to hopefully inviting her to one of my platforms. I had a chat with uh, Nobuntu Klazo Webster, uh, who's the deputy president of Build One South Africa, Ibosa. Um, amazing, amazing woman as well. And we need to profile and platform so many of these women so that we can hear their views, their visions for South Africa moving forward. There are too many guys, men out there who get to speak, but we need more women speaking because South Africa by and large is actually run by women. What do I mean? I mean our mothers. We were raised and nurtured by our mothers. If you go to school, the majority of the people that are teaching our children is women. If you go to healthcare, the person that's going to be tending to you the most is going to be a nurse. And that nurse is going to be female. Luckily today we're getting more and more female doctors as well into the space. If you go shopping, the cashiers that will be helping you will be women. Um, if you're going to government departments, the people that you're going to be facing are going to be women. If you're buying fruits and veggies from the street, the majority of that is going to be from women. A lot of the guys, taxi drivers, um, construction workers, other guys that are going to have their lunch with a plate, seven colors. You are probably being served and fed by a woman. You know, women run South Africa in such a big way, but we don't have enough of them in leadership positions. And it is important for women to actually share their stories and to raise their voices in some of these issues not just for women empowerment not just for feminism and gbv which i hate as a term but just to say this is what women are thinking this is how they feel and me personally i don't want women who sound and look like men in these leadership positions because it kind of kills the whole the whole point of what it is that we're trying to do we need women that are in tune with women who are mothers who are sisters who are daughters who are wives to come and share their perspectives, their struggles, and how, and how they want society to be better for them. So meeting Ayanda Ali, meeting uh, Nobuntu Shazo, uh, Webster was really, really amazing. I got to meet Tubabu, Velenko Sini, Shabisa. Um, I got to meet, meet uh, Lindeth, who I'm hopefully going to be liaising with to try and see if I can I can ever sit down with him. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next two months leading up to the, the national elections in South Africa, 29 May 2024. Um, I'm going to be reading through the manifestos of some of the bigger political parties. I'm planning to do a lot of videos around the manifestos. Um, some of the leaders that spoke yesterday were highlighting some of their key points in the manifestos. Simon Middleton actually said something very interesting. Actually, let me go through my notes because that's actually why I made this video. Some of my notes. So John Stianese the leader of the DA got to speak and he mentioned a Brent Hurst poll, which luckily later on Musi Maimani was like, don't really trust these polls because sometimes... They have hidden agendas. And John Stianese looked did defend and say, look, a lot of the polls are not uh, accurate. But what we look for in the polls is the trends. Because sometimes the trends are accurate. So if the poll is saying the ANC is going down drastically, it may not be that it'll go down drastically, but it will be that it is going down. So that is important. Spoke about the Moonshot Pact. It's called the Multi-Party uh, Pact, I think. Um, where the DA, IFP, I think Action SA has tend to be corrected. The Freedom Front Plus... Um, I'm not sure who else. They've come together to say we will stand against the ANC and we will get our voters to vote for us so we can stand united and make sure that the ANC doesn't have a 50% majority that it's always enjoyed and we are forced into a coalition government of which we have coalition governments in Tswane, in Eguruleni, in Johannesburg and other parts of South Africa. Many people are frustrated with the coalition governments. However, people are saying, look, give us time. And it's not necessarily just because there's bad coalition governments in Eguruleni that will have the same thing at national government. It may be different. Me personally, I think the DA is using this moonshot pact to try and secure power for themselves because I think if ever the ANC goes under 50%, under 45%, and the, the moonshot pact actually comes together and gets to run government, I think the DA will want to have most of the power there and we'll see probably a lot of fighting in that as well. But time will tell if ever we get to that scenario. John C. Nason was asked by the audience, if the ANC goes under 50%, how can they, or are they comfortable to state that they, they will not, they will not work with the ANC in coalition? 
And John Stienhuisen said, look, this is the whole point of the multi-party pact, to say we will not work with the ANC. In the past, John Stienhuisen has said they're willing to work with the ANC if it's run by Cyril Ramaphosa, etc., etc. And there are many DA voters and other DA supporters that are uncomfortable because people have said Cyril is almost like a DA president. The DA is happy with them. That's why they don't hold him to account the way they did Jacob Zuma. That's why they turn a blind eye to many of the shenanigans that are linked to Cyril Ramaphosa and they treat him with, with soft white gloves. But John Stianazen said the DA will not work with the ANC and they're committing to that now, which is something that Herman Mashaba also uh, emphasized when he was speaking. Um, John Stianazen was raising that he believes that the PA is more aligned with the ANC and he believes that if the Patriotic Alliance run by Gaten McKenzie gets any type of power, they'll probably vote with the ANC wherever they can. And that's going to be something maybe for Gaten McKenzie this morning when I listen to him to challenge and it's probably going to be one of the questions that Alec Hawk or the audience is going to be asking that, look, you've been accused of supporting the ANC. How do you feel about the ANC? And, and I almost have an idea of what he's going to say. Gaten McKenzie has said in the past that the Patriotic Alliance is about accumulating power. As long as they have certain seats and certain access to resources, that's what he wants. He doesn't care about DA, uh, of which he said that he is arrogant. He doesn't care about the ANC. He's like, if you guys will give us power so that we can influence and make an impact for our people. We are willing to sit and talk to you. Um, he was emphasizing that socialism doesn't work and everyone aspires to be in the suburbs and to live some type of capitalist life. There's a almost like an ethos around the room that most of the people don't like socialism, of which they claim that the ANC and the EFF are very pro on. Building a socialist state, social welfare state, where people are just saying our government will provide and it's not for us, almost at the expense of capitalist entrepreneurs, people doing for themselves. Herman Mashab has been very, very vocal, even on the panel show, saying that he's a capitalist through and through. He believes in private property. He believes in the ability for people to do for themselves. And he doesn't like the idea of government being very, very influential in the market out there. He was the chairman of the Free Market Foundation at some point. Velen Kosini Shabisa, and one of the 13 points that the IFP has on their manifesto is more support for traditional leaders. He went on to defending Gonyama Trust. He was asked a question from the audience. And it was one of the conversations I had with Simon Middleton um, during our refreshments break. Velen Kosini Shabis was saying Gonyama Trust is doing very well for the people on the ground. And it's something that I hope when I get to sit with him, I can challenge. Simon Middleton said, look, he doesn't think that the trust should be unbundled. Because many people at the time, uh, he was, I think, deputy president, if not acting president, Ubabu Khalima Mutlandi was saying the Ingonyama Trust needs to be unbundled along with all the other trusts that are run by, by traditional leaders. The people need to be given title deeds, have access to their land. It would be the ANC and the it would be the part of the ANC and part of the EFF that was saying, Don't do that. You guys are trying to unbundle the trusts so that these people can put up their land as collateral for the banks and the banks will come and repossess their land. Simon Middleton was saying, Look, he doesn't think the trust should be unbundled. And what we agreed on, maybe the issue is leadership. King Misu Zulu of the Zulus now may not be the best leader. His father, may he rest in peace, to King Kudwil Zulitin, may not have been the best leader. But the idea of having a visionary leader to run Ingonyama Trust on behalf of the people, to make sure that the economic activity on Ingonyama Trust is benefiting the people, building infrastructure for the economy there is for the people. 2.8 million hectares. And, you know, listening to his argument, I was like, I think I can understand this. Because you look at a place like Orania or any other space that would be maybe owned by Indian Muslims, white Afrikaners, black Khosa people, black uh, Venda people. If it was under a trust, but it had a good leader, maybe look at Royal Bafo King as an example with the money they've made from platinum mining. Maybe people wouldn't mind. I just needed Simon to also agree, which he kind of half did that, the whole idea of not giving people their title deeds in their land and giving them a king to rule over them like that is almost saying they are children. We don't trust that you'll be able to make the right decisions for yourself. You may lose this land. You may make silly uh, decisions. And if we're happy as a South African nation to say, look, you will keep having tribal land. The people on that land need to agree that, look, we are children. We need a parent to take care of us. Um, then it's fine. But then we need leadership that is going to be held to account. And if that leadership is not doing what needs to be done. They need to be removed. In the Zulu kingdom, for example, you cannot remove Umisu Zulu unless you follow traditional procedure. The people under Ingonyama Trust are not given a right to vote. They're not given a right to say, no, we prefer Jacob Zuma as the king of the Zulus and under Ingonyama Trust. We prefer Velinkosini Shabisa. We prefer Ngizwe Mkun. 
to be the person that's going to lead the Zulu nation moving forward. They don't have that opportunity. So that there's a case for something like that. The question I asked Simon Middleton as well was, if you're supporting Ingonyama Trust and other such trusts that own tribal land, how different is that from state ownership, which the EFF wants? And he laughed and he was like, look, you may be right. It's, it's something like state ownership. Ingonyama Trust is basically an example of what having state custodianship would look like. Of course, you'd want to have a different government and a government you can hold to account and a government that you can remove if they're not serving the people. But I thought that was a really good conversation. But it's something I want to challenge Ubabushabisa to say, I don't think Ingonyama Trust and other such um, trusts are serving the people best. Many people from Wazulu, from the Eastern Cape, from the Free State, from Mpumalanga, from Limpopo, um, I'm not so sure about the Northern Cape so much. A lot of those people, they move to the big cities to go and get jobs as domestic workers, as nannies, as security guards, as cleaners, because the land that they have is not serving them. Yes, there may be land where their animals graze. Yes, there may be land where they can plant, but it is not enough to sustain them. And their leaders are not building infrastructure so that they can actually build enterprise. Something like Afkri, where the, the, the people that are growing grain on this land can send their grain to a place that can sell, make them money. Something like a Karen beef, where people that uh, uh, maybe breed goats, sheep, cows, uh, pigs, chickens can send their stuff to a, a, a co-op or a space that can trade on their behalf. Um, something like a clover, where milk farmers, um, black in particular, but including Indian colored, etc., that live on tribal land, can take their milk, make sure that it is good quality, and then they sell milk, cheese, yogurt, amasi, etc. So the leadership and the structures, infrastructure is very, very important. And this is a conversation that needs to be had. Um, Kosini Shabisa was asked about the Cape Independence and uh, the, the ex-king, the previous king of Guazulu, uh, Uzweli Tin, had spoken and threatened to create an independent Guazulu state. And he was asked how he feels about that. And he said the IFP does not support an independent Guazulu. I think it's a conversation that actually needs to be held by the people of Guazulu. Would you guys like to have your own state, your own country, like Eswatini, where your king gets to rule over and gets to decide what happens to that country, how the tax works? Uh, I mean, if you look at Guazulu as an example, that would give them power, arguably, over the ports, maybe in Richards Bay, maybe in Durban, uh, power over the mining activity, the farming activity in Guazulu, and build an economy of Guazulu that can rival the rest of South Africa, which is something that I think Cape Independence wants. He was asked if he fears Mkonto Wesizwe, led by Jacob Zuma, uh, and he said he doesn't. And he says, based on the research that they've done as the, as the IFP, the MK is actually taking votes away from the ANC, not from the IFP. So he's very confident that the MK is not a threat, but the elections will expose whether he is right or wrong. Because many Zulu people, you know, speaking about tribalism, many Zulu people are saying they will be voting for MK. But it's not just Zulu people. In the streets, I've been meeting Amakosa, Tswana people, Sutu people. I've been meeting a few colored people who are like, look, we like Jacob Zuma. We like what type of a leader he was when he ran South Africa. We're going to vote for MK. He says he doesn't fear MK and he believes they're only taking from the ANC. But himself and some of the leaders were also saying the MK is an ANC project. The MK is an ANC project. They are just trying to help disgruntled ANC voters who were not planning to vote for the ANC to have another home to vote for. And if the MK gets votes, they're going to give those votes to the ANC is one of the arguments. And again, Tam will tell. I find it interesting that, uh, that he says that. And one of the things I want to challenge him on is uh, arguably Nkata Freedom Party was also an ANC project where Chief Mangosutu Tellezi, may he rest in peace, was sent out to go and find a way to consolidate Zulu votes and Zulu power under the IFP. And they broke away and became their own party in, in, in their own right. So what would stop Mkonto Isizu from doing something like that? COPE was a breakaway from the ANC. The PAC uh, under Robert Sobogwe was a breakaway from the ANC. We've had, we've had many others uh, as well. What is interesting for me, which is a conversation that I'll need to have on my platforms and with him or other leaders of the IFP, Mkulego Shengwa is another amazing leader, young leader of the IFP I'd love to sit with. What would be interesting to, to note is how they've lost power over time and whether the IFP is actually a dying party. Uh, Babu Velenko Singh Shabisa highlighted that the IFP is one of two political parties that existed uh, in 1994. One of a few, rather, let's put it that way, that has actually been able to survive through the storms. The ANC, of course, being one, the IFP being another one. I think it may be that the ACDP as well, under Reverend Kenneth Mishwe, who I sat with on the Pendle show, um, 
He was saying the IFP has been able to outlast many other political parties that have come and gone. People are looking for the full death of COPE coming this election, of which COPE at some point was the third most voted for party in the country. It's dwindled to almost nothing now under Musiwa uh, Terra Likota and Wabumbazi Mashilo. Back in 1994, the IFP got 2 million votes. 2 million votes. The EFF currently gets 1.8 million votes, making them the third biggest party, with the DA getting 3.6 million, with the ANC getting 10 million. But 2 million votes in 94. And then over time, you look at how they've moved from 2 million to 1.3 million to 1 million votes to at some point 800-odd thousand to... There was a year when they had um, 400 and something thousand votes but it was the year when umamu makwazam cb set up the the nfp and the nfp got about two hundred eighty thousand votes of which when you combine the votes it comes up to about seven hundred thousand from eight hundred and something thousand to about seven hundred thousand with the ifp and the nfp and then at the last elections they went up to about five hundred and eighty thousand votes but this is there's like a downward trend is the ifp going to be losing more votes this year from five hundred eighty thousand maybe to four hundred thousand maybe less Especially when you look at the introduction of Omkonto Esizwe and very, very big uh, losing Ubaba Umangu Sutub Telezi last year who passed away, who has been the leader of the IFP all these other years. What does that mean for the IFP? Are people going to start saying, you know what, the king of the IFP, the chief of the IFP is gone. So it's time for us to be like, now, you know what, we're good. We're out. Uh, thank you very much, but uh, we're happy to move on. The tagline and the hashtag for the IFP in the, in the posters and the campaigning is hashtag do it for Ushenge, who is Ubabu Umangu Sutub Telez. His face is on the posters along with Ubabu Shabisa. So that would be an interesting conversation uh, in itself. And then the last thing I want to highlight, you know, uh, Herman Mashaba, uh, most of the things he raised yesterday are things that he raised on the panel show. So I'm not going to rehash that. If you'd like to hear um, the things he spoke about yesterday, he echoes a lot of them on the panel show. Go check out that episode. The panel show with Dubabu Herman Mashaba. I want to highlight to Musi Maimani, who is now coming in as a new player in these elections, having been the, the leader of the Democratic Alliance when, when they were the opposition back in 2019. They are currently led by John Stianes and with Musi Maimani leaving. He left, Herman Mashaba left when he was mayor of Johannesburg. Other people like uh, Pumzile Van Dam have left. Um, Bongani Baloy has left. He's formed his own political party, Shiluba. I sat with him on the panel show as well. Um, other amazing black leaders have left Lindy Mazibu were back in the day Musi Maimane now comes back as bold one South Africa Ibosa. and he's saying they are just targeting 2 million votes and he believes 2 million is the, is the number that people should be looking at in these elections because whoever has control over 2 million votes gets to be the kingmaker the EFF of course had 1 million votes in the last elections are they going to go up now or not and become the kingmaker again or are there going to be new parties it could be Bosa it could be Rise Mzansi under Osonge Zuzibi. It could be Arise SA under Mpo Tagada. Um, it could be, I'm, I'm not sure where ACT of Ace Mahashule is sitting. It could be Umkonto Wesizu. Who's going to be the kingmaker in these coming elections nationally and provincially? Speaks very well. You still get these uh, Barack Obama kind of, you know, undertones when he speaks to Musi Maiman. He's still selling a message of hope, life beyond the ANC, life beyond um, this type of democracy that we have. He touched on the ANC legacy, which I, I really uh, I, I really got touched. One of the questions that was asked to John Stianazen of the DA was, but you guys speak very much about the mind and not about the heart. And South Africans are very big about the heart. Ubuntu. You guys are speaking about governance, service delivery. The rational mind will say, let's vote for the DA. They seem to do better service. But there's a heart involved. And Musi Maimani spoke about this. He said, you know, for well-off white people, white people, other privileged people, they don't understand the, the issues of, of voters and black people in particular. It's very quick to speak about service delivery and those things. But whatever you're pitching to them doesn't sound inclusive to black people. It doesn't sound like you're saying, we will work with you. You will be dignified. We want to hold hands with you, but we respect you. And it's something that a lot of people are missing. And that's the heart. It is something that I've raised on platforms. It's something I've debated with certain white people to say, the way you guys speak to black voters, it's, it's as if you think they are stupid. Like they are not smart. And they can, they can feel the sentiments. They can hear the undertones. You guys don't see them. You guys think their decisions are, are retarded. And that's not the case. 
you have to listen to the person because when they vote ANC, when they vote EFF, it's not just because of emotions. Some of it is because, you know, they're actually applying their minds, they're applying bread and butter issues, and they are seeing themselves being included in an ANC and an EFF. If you look at the DA, if you look at the Freedom Front Plus, if you look at some of these other political parties, they don't seem to see black people. You know, and he spoke so beautifully about the ANC and the ANC legacy of the past. It reminded me of when I went to the podcast party and I was speaking about the legacy of the ANC and the good work they've done in the past. Because he mentioned things like, you know, some of the roads that have been built, people that get to live in homes um, that they didn't have before, people that get to send their children to school and get to see their children become professionals. Something that it seems some of the other political parties are not even speaking to. That we're not coming here to come and serve as this top-down approach. We are coming to work with you on the ground. And something that has been big for me in the last couple of weeks is the strength of the ANC on the ground. It's something I discussed with Umusi. I got to have dinner with him last night. It's something I discussed with him. It's something that uh, I appreciate that Action SA is doing as well. And one of the things that surprises people about Action SA, why they're doing so well, it's because they do work on the ground. The DA is not doing a proper push in townships on the ground, which almost means they don't want to be there. Herman Mashaba says one of the issues he had as mayor of Johannesburg was the DA had an issue with him serving poorer spaces and calling him an EFF mayor. He's like, but I'm not a DA mayor, I'm the mayor of Johannesburg and I need to serve all the people, in particular poor people, of which I was a poor person at some point. But you guys want us to focus on certain people and I don't appreciate that. The power of the ANC on the ground, it's something Dan Cord has said when he sat with me on Dope Conversations, is not to be scoffed at. I've now set up Penalism Community Branches, PCBs. I'm planning to begin building branches on the ground for volunteerism, not for political power, not as a church for people to tithe and make me rich. Oh, papa, go deeper, papa, and be major one. It's volunteerism inspired by Afri Forum's work on the ground, by some of the work I saw happening in Orania, by the gift of the givers, led by Imtia Suleiman, by Stephen Bantu Bigo's black community uh, programs, um, the Black Panthers Party, run by Huey P. Newton in America, the Japanese and their culture of minimalism and service, and even the North Koreans and Juche, doing for self, self dune. I'm setting up penalism community branches as my project of how I make South Africa better. I've set up a WhatsApp group. We've got over 100 people there now. And we're going to be building systems to ensure that people on the ground are present. Like the ANC, like the EFF is doing so well. And Action SA is doing now. And what Build One South Africa is planning to do. We need people on the ground to volunteer to say we will pick up the litter. We will patrol the communities. We will visit weddings. We will visit funerals to come and lend our sympathies and condolences and hopefully leave, some, leave something. We will volunteer at weddings and funerals for free to come and serve the families to see that we are present. And like Afri Forum, we will make sure we do some type of basic service delivery. And then we will partner with local businesses, even if they are foreign owned, to say, listen, we are here. We are here with your spaza shops. Please make sure we're gonna come and do um, patrols at your spaza shops and make sure that uh, the food is not expired. We will make sure, my friend, that you are selling the right things. We will make sure, my friend, that you are also safe in this space. But we will also make sure that, my friend, the money that you're making here from our people, you have to invest some of it back into the people. So donate to our weddings. Donate to our funerals because we buy from you. Donate to our soccer teams in the township. Donate to our schools, my friend. And then some of the more formal businesses, the Capitex, the ShopRites, the PEP, you know, even the, the Shisanyamas, the bottle stores, the taverns. Mamuban, Babani, the taxi industries in these communities. How do you guys contribute? We need some of your money to sponsor our soccer tournaments, to sponsor netball tournaments, to sponsor some of the schools, so that we can see kit, we can see even the churches. How do we volunteer at churches? How do we work with the church to feed the people, to house the people, to help people build better homes and, and in the communities and create these penalism community branches because it's on the ground that real change works and it's what keeps the ANC powerful. Outside of corruption, uh, maladministration their arrogance etc it's the work on the ground i'm gonna to have to close off this video soon because uh i have to head out the conference starts at half past eight it's ten past eight now uh i'm gonna to have to take like a short walk because it's it's not too far 
but again man i'm, I'm honored to be here uh, I'm going to be making another video hopefully later today if not tomorrow speaking about some of the conversations and things that were sparked today at the sit downs and some of the people hopefully I will have met again I need to send a shout out to Mr. Simon Middleton thank you so much um, I'm looking forward to the work we're going to be doing together with your support thank you again to Rob Hersoff for inviting me here and I always have to give a shout out to his beautiful wife uh, Katie and his beautiful family and his sons Alex I think is in LA if I'm not mistaken shout out to Alex um, shout out to Howard Saxton, man, who hosted me. Um, I'm hoping to do a lot of work with Howard Saxton and some of his associates. Shout out to Musi Maimani, um, that I had a really great time chatting with yesterday. Ayanda Ali, that I'm going to be chatting to. Nobuntu, uh, or Webster. Um, shout out to some of the people that I've met before. Clinton, um, Dirk, one of the co-founders of YFM. I actually, I'm, I'm going to chat to him as well. Dirk, uh, we'll speak about Craig Maloka when they set up YFM and the work that they've done. Um, Alec Hogg, man, Newcastle High School, all boys, uh, Unite, and shout out to his wife, uh, who also went to Newcastle High School in KZN, shout out to the beautiful town of Hermanus, uh, to Anneli Rabi, um, for hosting us as the mayor of the Overstrand, Overstrand, um, I don't know who else I'm for you, Babu Velenko Singh, Shabisa, Lindeth, that I'm going to be speaking to as well, um, Stuart, um, geez, I'm, I know I'm going to forget a lot of people. But everyone who's been welcoming, warm, Kate, of course. Um, I'm looking forward to the chats, to the engagements. Babu Herman Mashaba, who's here. Uh, Gator McKenzie, my boy, G. Uh, Going to be catching up with him. It doesn't have to be today. You know, I have access to Gator, which makes me happy. I need to spend some time actually sitting with Ukeni Gnen. He's another great um, leader who wants to see change in South Africa, the Sushi King. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm excited to be here and to be here for on spaces like this allows me to connect with people and to share my experiences and what I've seen with you guys. And when I do that, I allow you guys to use me as an instrument to say, Pen, you must ask these people, you must challenge them. What can they do for us? This is what needs to happen. And that speaks to the, to the birth of penalism community branches. It's me looking for ways that we can make a difference. Of course, keep contributing to Action Society and Cameron. Contribute to Imtia Suleiman's Gift of the Givers. Contribute to Afri Forum if you can. Um, study the, the Orania model and see if you can create something similar. Um, and Santa Lax, my boy, is doing amazing work. He's doing drug rehab currently. He needs to do more work in Soweto as well. Some of the work that he's doing. Um, Tutuzanya Zuma and uh, all game changers. Winston Innes and the work they're doing in Durban. Um, and everyone else who's trying to make this country better. We need to come together and work. You know, Musi Maimani was speaking about how Bossa is about values, and that's why they're not really much into partnering with so many different people and the Moonshot Pact. We want our values to stay strong regardless so that people know what we stand for, and then to do the work. At the end of the day, it's about the work. So we need to do the work. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm hoping to be invited to more gatherings like this, especially those that are hosted by the Indian community. The Indian Muslim community is a community I admire. I'm looking forward to being invited to some of their platforms or gate crashing some of their platforms. The Jewish community and the Jewish Board of Deputies in South Africa, I'm very open to sitting at some of their gatherings. Um, I'm hoping to be invited to, I'm going to be sitting with Dubaba with Santaku, hoping to sit with the taxi industry in South Africa. Um, I met an amazing young man, I forget his name now, in Durban last year, who runs the, I think he runs the National Taxi Association, or is one of the leadership, and he works with taverns and shabins. We need to have conversations about alcohol abuse and some of the work that tavern and shabin owners need to be doing in the township. Let people have a good time, but let's do it responsibly uh, and find ways to give back to the communities. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm forgetting. Don't know what I'm forgetting. Uh, happy to sit with um, the Zulu king, Misu Zulu. That would be really, really dope. Happy to sing with, sit with any of the other kings and leaders in South Africa uh, from the, uh, the the Basutu clans. I'd like to visit the king, Umswati, or some of his family members, uh, the kings in the Eastern Cape, kings in Lim Limpopo, Pumalanga, the Ndebeles, you know, I used to know Inko Susipo Mashangu, who passed away during lockdown, very, very sad, an amazing man who had a great vision for the for the kings and, and tribal land, which houses about 25 million South Africans, by the way. Out of 62 million South Africans, 25 million live on tribal land. That's nothing to laugh about. And some of the infrastructure work he wanted to do. Uh, I know Mamu Gloria Serobe and some of the guys from so the Solidarity Fund have been doing some work on, on tribal land and maybe some of those stories will come out later. But these are some of the chats and conversations we need to have. Drop me a DM on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Twitter. 
let's see if I can add you to the Penalism community branches. Um, if you're working with any other of the organizations, dope. But if not, or even if you are, let's see if we can collaborate. Let's, let's work in our communities and let's turn our communities into something really, really special. And I'm going to be one of the people that is going to be driving for this to happen. Volunteer work, not for money, uh, but hopefully it's something you can put on your CV. Hopefully it's something you can use to network. I know at the Mumsy Foundation, a lot of people networked and got business and job opportunities through that space. You get to learn skills because if you're volunteering, we're going to be volunteering in spaces where we need you to work with your hands and you're going to learn skills and be able to give back to, to the community and learn for yourself. Something that's going to be a great legacy for our kids as well. Penalism Community Branches, PCBs. Penal the Black Pen Amount, um, the Biz News Conference, number six, uh, in the beautiful town of Hermanus, uh, the Whale Coast in the Western Cape. I'm going to be in Cape Town tomorrow afternoon. So anyone who's going to be in Cape Town can drop me a uh, DM as well. Let's see if we can have a quick coffee before I have to fly back to Johannesburg. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Bij een lief voor jullie. Ik waardeer al die werk wat jullie doen. Al die liefde en ondersteuning wat ik krijg van, van jullie af. Um, ons moet samenwerken. Ons moet uh, handen houden. Ons, ons moet hier die land bouwen. Ons moet um, Zuid-Afrika red. <laughs> Dat is baie, baie belangrijk. Uh, van mijzelf ben je al die zwaar pen. Uh, op hen en die pen en die mnjame. Sie wil ons onder. Kom hulle sibbe en sy van baguit. En ek sam hulle in kanda man jyma video. Al shanje en sy makebe. O kuluma na bantu betu. Ngwazu kanda ma vijens. Ngwazu tumelo ko ko mkulu. O malume. O anti. O babo mngano. O babo mkulu. O mamngano. O mamkulu. O guti na bobez guti. Isi mo. Se politiki. Se som noto. So ko hola. La South Africa si mega njan. Skulume nga maso nto. Skulume nge nkosi. Nge nduna. Skulume nga msebe nse kmele ba wense. No guti. Njoba betenga go my friend. Njoba betenga. Ba tenga gubani. La bantu baya ba klasa yin. Baya ba klasa ma be shatisa. So, so as well. But I know my Sisutu or my Sutu languages, my Tswana Pedi languages are weak, but I will be trying. But really, uh, Haulu, Pene Ensu, Penuel Pene Ensu. I need to learn some of my Sutu languages because I know language is like a magic potion to be able to access someone's heart and soul, and it's something that I'm going to be working on. Have been working on a little bit of my French. Bonjour. Uh, comment ça va? Ça va bien? Peñuel, uh, les stylos noirs. Going to be working on some of that as well because I, I want to travel through the African continent and connect with some of our French uh, brothers and sisters, black, colored, uh, some of the Indian in these African countries that actually speak French uh, like the same way we speak English as a, a ex-British colony and we connect. Love you guys very much. Appreciate you guys very much. Stay tuned to maybe some of my Instagram stories where I'm going to be giving updates. Maybe on Twitter, I'll be dropping a thing or two as well. I appreciate you guys. Have a great and blessed day. Let's get to work. Let's work hard. Let's build the type of community that we want to emulate Dubai, Hong Kong, Las Vegas, Sun City, Stellenbosch, uh, Hermanus, you know, beautiful towns that are doing really, really amazing work. I'm out. Cheers.